Hey folks, Sirdar here, and in this episode of Dev with Sirdar, I'm going to take a look at VS Codium. This is an alternative to Microsoft's Visual Studio Code editor. Now by now, you're probably familiar with VS Code. It's the open source editor and IDE by Microsoft that's become quite successful across multiple platforms. I use it myself, as you've probably seen from the demos on this channel. Now VS Codium is a fork of Visual Studio Code. It's built on the same source code, but it doesn't include Microsoft's proprietary additions and telemetry. If you're a Linux user, one possible way to think about it is it's to VS Code what CentOS has been to Red Hat Linux. That's not an exact analogy, but you get the idea. A big part of what motivated creating VS Codium was two things. One was the telemetry that Microsoft adds to its build of VS Code, which sends information back to Microsoft about the product's usage. Now, the official Microsoft documentation for this telemetry says it consists of crash reports for VS Code itself, error telemetry for internal app errors, and usage data. The key thing is that these are not crashes or errors in the apps that you develop in VS Code. These are problems with VS Code itself. This is data generated to help Microsoft make the program better. It's very much the same as with other things that Microsoft makes, including Microsoft Windows itself. Now, with VS Code, you can opt out of this stuff if you want to, and I will show you how to do this a little later. But some people are not comfortable at all with the idea of Microsoft gathering telemetry on their usage, even if they have the option to manually disable it. That's where VS Codium comes in. It provides a version of VS Code where the telemetry isn't just disabled, but it isn't even there to begin with. Now, the other issue people have with VS Code is the licensing of the product itself and how it can be used. The core code for VS Code, what Codium is built with, is licensed under the MIT license, which is quite liberal. But the final product Microsoft offers, the built and delivered VS Code product, that's provided under the more restrictive Microsoft product license. Now, for the most part, the Microsoft license is pretty liberal if all you want to do is download and run the program on your own. But if you wanted to, for instance, reprovide the software as a commercial offering with your own changes, you could not do that. You would have to go back to the source artifacts and use those, since they are provided under the more liberal license, MIT, that allows such things. Now, another issue people may have with VS Code is the Microsoft VS Code Marketplace, the repository for add-ons that VS Code connects to. VS Code can't be configured to work with other marketplaces by default, although it is possible to, for instance, install an extension that connects to another marketplace and installs things from there. And the other problem is that the Microsoft Marketplace itself is a proprietary offering. There is no way to make open source improvements on the marketplace. So one corollary of this is how some of the extensions that Microsoft makes for VS Code are also delivered as proprietary offerings. For instance, the IntelliCode, LiveShare, WSL, and Dev Container extensions, those are all offered under proprietary licenses. But the PyWrite and Python extensions, those are more liberally licensed. So your money is going to vary based on your use case. And VS Codium by itself doesn't solve this particular problem, but it does highlight how the Microsoft ecosystem is this patchwork of restrictions where some things are more liberally licensed than others. So this gives us several possible reasons to switch to Codium. The licensing restrictions on the product, the Microsoft-centric design, and the way add-ons work, which is also somewhat Microsoft-centric. So I have here running a copy of VS Codium, and I should note that you can install both Codium and VS Code in the same system without too many problems. On this system, when I right-click on a directory, I will have options to open that directory in either editor. So the look and feel for Codium it's for the most part indistinguishable from VS Code. There's only the application logo and a couple of other bits of branding that are different. Everything else behaves the same. For instance, this Python project that I'm demonstrating here, it still sets up and runs the same way I did in VS Code. It still uses the, the Python extension. Uh, the console is still in the same place. All the prompts and widgets are what we expect them to be. Now, the way VS Code works with project-specific settings is that they're stored in a .VS Code subdirectory that's inside the project directory. And the same thing happens with Codium. The directory is also named .VS Code. That way, if you open the same project with VS Code or VS Codium interchangeably, they will use the same settings. That said, I would recommend sticking with one or editor or the other when you're working on a given project just to keep things uncomplicated. I mentioned before that the VS Code extension marketplace 
is a proprietary thing. Codium uses its own open source marketplace supported by the Eclipse Foundation. It's called openvsx.org. And extensions have to be added to that marketplace manually by their creators. There's no automatic migration. But the vast majority of the extensions I've worked with myself are available in the OpenVSX marketplace. The most obvious exceptions are the most restrictively licensed VS Code extensions. So if one of the extensions that you work with on a regular basis doesn't show up in the OpenVSX marketplace, you can work around that. All you have to do is download the VSIX file for the extension that you want to add from the VS Code marketplace and you use the install from VSIX command in Codium to add it in. This is also present in VS Code itself, by the way. So for instance, we have Microsoft's C++ add-on. This isn't available in OpenVSX, but if I want to add it to Codium, I can just add it manually through this series of steps I've just illustrated. And finally, Codium, as I mentioned before, does not have telemetry included. Now, if I want to disable telemetry in VS Code manually, I can do that. It's not hard. In VS Code's user settings, I just look for telemetry and then just choose the level of reporting that I want to have. If I set this to off, that disables all reporting. However, this is only for the core VS Code product itself. It doesn't affect any add-ons. Each of those might have its own separate telemetry controls, so you'd have to configure them individually. So to sum up, VS Codium uses VS Code's open source core to deliver a version of that editor which looks and behaves almost exactly the same but doesn't have Microsoft's branding or telemetry. The biggest drawback is that you can't directly install extensions from Microsoft's marketplace, but you can work around that. And its own open source marketplace is almost all the extensions you might need. So if you like VS Code as software, but if you want as little association as possible with Microsoft the company, try giving VS Codium a shot. And that's it for this episode. If you liked it, leave a comment below. And don't forget to follow Dev with Sirdar and InfoWorld on Facebook, YouTube, and InfoWorld.com. <laughs>